What's up? Thank you for clicking on this video. If you've clicked on it, you must see that Anakin is not the chosen one. Say what? Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, but I mean, some people are like, no, he's got to be the chosen one. But if you really think about it with episode seven coming out and the possibility of another Sith Lord threat, we have to really reconsider whether or not Anakin is the chosen one. So, uh, Timothy, do you have any other clues? I mean... Well, obviously, George Lucas did not intend for there to be another Chosen One. He wanted Anakin to be the Chosen One, and that was his intention from the beginning. He set everything up, hinging on that idea. Yeah. But, yeah, like you said, the problem is that now that there's other Sith Lords, maybe Anakin didn't really fulfill the whole prophecy. Yeah, and here's the other thing that really bugs me, bu bugs me is that even when they, he was saying Anakin was the Chosen One, there was no evidence to suggest that he really even was the Chosen One. I mean, the only thing they suggested was his midichlorian count was higher than Master Yoda's. Oh yeah, big whoop. He's got more midichlorians than Master Yoda. Does that mean he's the Chosen One? He no. clearly still was not more powerful than Yoda. No, he wasn't. He never, ever, no. even, even as Darth Vader, he, he never, never showed his power to be greater than that of Yoda. And um, uh, do you want to take out the quote from Yoda from the Great Holocron? Yeah, yeah, yeah dude. Yeah. This, this was a huge find that kind of really fueled this whole yes. thing. Yes. So this is what Yoda said about the prophecy. And this is in the Great Holocron This of wasn't the in Jedi. the movies. This wasn't in the movies, but this is something... That's kind of part of the lore of Star Wars. and is considered Like, this is the real prophecy right. from word for word what the real prophecy is. Anyway. Well, what Yoda says about Well, what Yoda says, but... So, yeah. fully defeated by just anyone, the dark side cannot be. But only by the chosen one. And who might this Jedi... Who might be this Jedi? No, I do not. But not yet born is he or she. This much sense I can a vessel of pure force, the Chosen One will be, more powerful than any Jedi in history. So, any Jedi in history! Okay, let, let, let's pause for a second. Do you think that Anakin is the most powerful Jedi in history? Do you think he was the most powerful Jedi ever? I mean... No, I can name like four or five different Jedi. I mean, let's say Mace Windu was more powerful. Obi Wan was more powerful. Yoda was more powerful. I mean, heck, I could you could argue argue that Luke was more powerful. I'm like, I mean, there's so many Jedi I can name that are more powerful than Anakin, even when he was Darth Vader. Oh, Sidious, yeah, Sidious is another one. I'm right. like, there are so many people. I'm like, so if Anakin really is the chosen one, then he's supposed to be the most powerful Jedi ever, right? I mean. Yeah. Yeah. That's part of it. The only thing that Anakin has going for him is that he supposedly destroyed the Sith by killing Darth Sidious. Mm -hmm. It's the only thing he has going for him. However, with Episode 7 and going back Even to that... Even that is taken away from his yes. status as being the Chosen One. Even that won't Because work. some people argue that Supreme Leader Snoke is Darth Plagueis. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. Right, it's right. just a rumor. But if he is, then we know for a fact he's a Sith Lord, in which case Anakin did not destroy the Sith. But that brings up another question. If Anakin's not chosen one, then who is? Well, yeah, another point I wanted to make there was that um, even if he's not Plagueis, he could still be a Sith Lord. That, yes, I forgot about that. He could still be a <laughs> Sith Lord, even if he's not Plagueis, because for one, you, you look at Snoke, and if you've seen Episode 7, spoilers, by the way. Yeah, if you have not seen Episode 7, pause this video, go see it in theaters, come back, and we'll be waiting for you. Right. So Snoke appears to have had a really disfigured face and you know he probably wasn't as huge as he was in the movie no it was probably it was probably just a hologram like in right, episode right. five with the uh, Darth Sidious you know exactly but the thing is I think like um most likely he uh he was old enough to have lived during the time of Sidious mm. he looks like his species whatever kind of alien he is he's totally old enough to have lived during that time so I, he and he knows the dark side. That's the other thing. We don't know of any other entity that really knows the dark side besides mm -hmm. Sith. Yeah. So when you look at other villains throughout Star Wars that were not Sith, they do not know the dark side of the Force. So. Yeah. I mean, okay, J.J. Abrams. They kind of set it up with Knights you know, of Ren. Right. Yeah. And I'm hoping that that's not the case, and that they're actually that Snoke is really a Sith Lord. Because we have a theory. About uh, that, we really, <laughs> really hope is true. So the oh big, my gosh, I hope this is true. So the big question is, if Anakin it's is not, not the chosen one, one, then who is? I think it's Ray. 
Yeah. I say it's right. I think that was now, clear. Now, let's think about this. If you've seen episode seven, then you know what we're talking about. I mean, she redirected a mind probe on Kylo Ren. She, you know, picked up Anakin's freaking lightsaber with the Force. I'm like, Luke wasn't even able to do that until episode five after he had sufficient training from Obi-Wan. And not to mention, she did a mind trick on a stormtrooper, and she doesn't even know anything about the Force. She knows nothing, and yet she was able to kick Kylo Ren's butt. I'm like, okay, so what is that? I mean, the stuff that she was able to accomplish, I'm like, she has potential to be the most powerful Jedi ever, ever. Yeah. And not to mention, Yoda says back in that quote, not yet born is he or she. The uh-huh. prophecy never said it had to be a dude. Yeah, no. so it could be, it could totally be a girl. I'm like, I'm down, I don't care. <laughs> I mean, <I'm> yeah. down. <laughs> it's just like, I don't care about the girl. Yeah. But yeah, seriously, man, I'm like, I'm so pumped. I'm like, I hope this is right. Yeah, because if they dude. go this route, because I'm not trying to, you know, rain on anyone's parade. If you think, oh, she's some, because some people think, oh, she's Ben Kenobi's da- uh, granddaughter. Or, oh, she's Luke or Han's kid. I'm like, no offense, but I would rather her be the chosen one. And she has a lot of qualities of a chosen one that really sink up me. If you've ever seen other chosen one stories, like say Harry Potter, for example, in the first origin movie, they, uh, Hagrid's talking to Harry and he's all like, you're a wizard, Harry. And he's like, no, I'm just Harry, just Harry. And he ends up being the chosen one. Same thing with Neo in the Matrix, how he's like, wait, so you're telling me I can dodge bullets? And he's like, no, what I'm trying to tell you is that when you're ready, you won't have to. I'm like, there's, I mean, the thing with Ray when she was going up to, I feel bad, I keep forgetting that girl's woman's name, uh, that woman with the weird glasses. It started with an M. It started with an M. I, I, it's just killing me. I forgot her name. Anyway, she, she was asking Ray, like, who are you? And she said, I'm no one. I'm like, that is the person we want to be the chosen one. Not, I will be the most powerful Jedi ever. I mean, which sounds better Even as a kid, he was a little bit arrogant. Yeah, absolutely. It's working. It's working. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh. no, I'm like, Ray's like, okay, um, I'm here. <laughs> She's like, I don't know if I'm going to be awesome, but she ends up kicking Kylo Ren's butt and doing all this awesome stuff. And actually, I heard rumors that the actress is kind of playing herself, to be honest. Right. I heard rumors. That is so great. That I is so that. great because I heard rumors. I saw an interview she was talking about. Uh, with uh, JJ about how she went into her audition she didn't know if she was going to get the role or not she didn't know if she was good enough and JJ's like that's who I want to play Ray and I'm like that's who we want to play Ray someone who doesn't think they're good enough absolutely and I mean, so this yeah. would be a great opportunity for them to kind of fix the problems with the prequels and absolutely one of the biggest ones to me was you know one of the most important things about Star Wars is that the classic hero's journey you've seen it a million times before but it's still not old because it's a universal story. Yes. That, you know, it's one that everybody, everybody can attach themselves to. And you they did a terrible job with character. Anakin. <laughs> they did a terrible job with Anakin. And it was, it was kind of sad that it didn't work out better than it did. Mm-mm. But now, with Rey, we could kind of say, you know, no, Anakin. Yeah, that yeah. wasn't it. I'm like, no offense to Anakin. I mean, I mean, he was a great total epic villain with Darth Vader, but I'm just like... I mean, he's obviously better than Kylo Ren. Kylo Ren, you can totally see that so he has that so even, much Anakin. That would add even more tension between the two characters. Because, because you got Rey, who's the chosen one, and he finds out that she's the chosen one, and he's like, yeah. totally makes him even more angry, <laughs> because yeah. Darth Vader was supposed to be the chosen I get a one. Feeling that, I, don't, like, I get a feeling that he almost knows about the prophecy. Yeah. And what if he's to. like, wait a second, if Anakin's not the chosen one... And it's her, then, oh, tra- whoa, this is, yeah, like, crap. <laughs> She's, he's got to yeah. be really ticked. And, see, I'm trying to think. But another thing is is that I think that, I know I keep forgetting her name, that woman whose name starts with them, that's what we're going to call her for now, and the woman whose name starts with them. <laughs> All right. Um, that she, um, I get a feeling she knows the prophecy because some people have argued, I think JJ even confirmed that she's lived for over a thousand years, which means she's lived from episode one to episode seven throughout the entire Star Wars saga. And meaning, and in which case she says she doesn't know, she's no Jedi, but she knows the force. Like she knows all about the force. So what that gives me is what if she knows about the great holocron? What if she knows about the prophecy of the chosen one? And when she looked at Ray, and the reason why she asked her that question, who are you? 
is that she probably thinks, you're the chosen one! I hope that's the... I really hope that's... I know, I know. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to be excited about episode 8, but oh my gosh, JJ, I am going to kill you if you don't do this! (laughs) You've got to do this, man! I'm so... like. Ah, oh, you have to do this, man. This is cool. I know he's not directing. I know he's not directing, but I have a feeling he's still writing. And I think the Return of the Jedi writer, also who also also wrote Episode Absolutely. Seven, is you working. Do this. Oh my gosh, I really <laughs> Dude, want this. He's so good. I, will, I mean, I will be excited about this, and I think it will be good. But if you throw this theory down, it will be amazing. It will be like could be better than Episode Five, almost. If you throw this down. Yeah, and like that's that. saying something because episode five, in my opinion, is probably the greatest Star Wars movie of all time. With all of the seven that we've seen, I'd say episode five is probably the best. Now, episode seven, some people probably walked away unsatisfied. I'm sure if you watch it and you're walked away unsatisfied, okay, well, that's because your stakes were written too high. Because think about it this way, episode seven had so much to do. You had to develop new characters. You had to revisit old right. characters. Yeah. And, I mean, there's just so much you have to develop. You have to develop the new plot. You have to develop the new villain, the new threat. Right. I mean, all the stuff you had to do. I mean, episode four, that's what that was all about. It was developing the threat, the plot, what's going on. I mean, that's what episode four was about. And that's what I think episode seven was about. Right, right. And, you know, that's what some people just don't get. Like, I expected something awesome. I'm like... It was awesome, okay? I'm sorry, it was. (laughs) You think about any decent TV show... The first season is usually totally crazy. Yeah, I mean... For a well, reason. I mean, yeah. you can... Really skilled people can actually develop the characters at a really mm, fast rate. Absolutely. And make it work. But for the most part, I mean, it's not going to be great out front. No. And I really hope that a lot of the things, that the seeds that they sowed in Episode 7 ends up reaping really awesome plot points yeah. in episode 5 another thing I hope they do is I hope they bring back Yoda in episode 8 as a ghost really cool. I heard rumors that they I, it's a rumor again it, I don't know if this is true or not but if they bring Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan back as a ghost oh my gosh that would be so that cool that would be kind of cool but what would be really cool is if she's training with Luke and she actually sees Yoda and Yoda looks at her and he's like you're the chosen one. And then he goes over to Obi-Wan and like maybe they could bring Liam Neeson back as Qui-Gon. I told you, in your face! <laughs> hey ya! Anakin is not the chosen one. What? And then we have Hayden Christensen there and he runs away crying. And I'm like, oh, oh what? <laughs> oh my gosh, I want to oh, see that. Man. I almost like, ugh. And then I'm like, JJ, if you're having writer's block, bro, we're right here. I mean, oh, yeah. we are right yeah. here for you. <laughs> Seriously, JJ, I I want this to happen. Please make this happen. Because, see, this I'm not trying to be arrogant or anything. Believe me, I'm not trying to be arrogant. But seriously, I think this is probably the best theory that will be thrown out on YouTube. I really do. I mean, because, no offense. I don't know, it seemed kind of obvious to me. Well, yeah, I, I, can't believe, I can't believe no one else thought of that. Because think about it. I mean, with... I mean, because some people say, oh, she's the reincarnation of Anakin Skywalker, who's the chosen one. I'm like, no, she's not the reincarnation of Anakin, and she's not Luke's daughter, she's not Leia's daughter, she's not related to any, she's not related to Obi-Wan, and no offense, but I'm like, seriously, how can you not come with that? Because the chosen one's supposed to be the most powerful Jedi ever, and we can prove that, yes, Luke was powerful, and Leia was also powerful, because they were Anakin's children, but... I think that we've proven that you can be a powerful Jedi without having any lineage. Obi-Wan had no lineage, Qui-Gon had no lineage, Yoda had no lineage, Mace Windu had no lineage, and all four of those Jedi were freaking powerful, and they had no lineage. I of, really feel like we need know, to break the Skywalker. Parents. We need to break the Skywalker dynasty. I know that the Star Wars universe is centered around the Skywalker universe, and that's okay. I mean, you still have Luke, you still have Leia. I mean, those are still tales. I don't know how we're going to continue that lineage. In it, but, like, no. for me, having her be a nobody or maybe... I mean, I, I've also thought that, like, her parents yeah. left her on Jakku. And we, we know the history of Jakku now. We know that there was a huge battle that happened mm-hmm. with the rebels in the Empire. And the Empire lost big time again. Yes. And um, <laughs> so the question is, who is her family and why was she there in the be- to begin with? Did they grow up there or was, like... Did or they are they bad? Them? Maybe they were imperial people. That would be a very be interesting cool. plot know. twist if her parents were bad. So her that parents be... left her. That's the question. If people out there saying that she's, you know, Luke or yes. whatever, she knew her parents. Yeah. She actually knew them. 
And yeah, that was in the flashback. They showed this little girl, and that was yeah. her going, come back, come back, you know. Like when she touched Anakin's lightsaber, and she had all these visions, and she heard Luke going, no, and, you know, Vader right, is right, my father. Right. and I mean, all these stuff just flashed right before, her, and she started freaking out. Of course, she has to be. She has to be. I think I, she's the chosen one. Of course, some people say, oh, the lightsaber calls to you because you're the next Skywalker. I'm like, that would be lame. I'm sorry. It would be. The lightsaber, I mean... That's never been a Jedi thing where a lightsaber calls to you anyway, is it? I'm like, that's, that's a, a Harry, Harry Potter thing where that's a, a wand thing. calls to you. That's a Harry Potter that's thing. That's a new thing he came up with. Exactly. And I kind of like it. I like it, but it's more of a Harry Potter thing. I mean, because the well, wand know, calls to you. The whole you know. thing in the lightsaber is a mechanical device. Exactly. And that's, that was kind of like... Part of being... I mean, I in know. episode six, Vader, when he picks up Luke's lightsaber though. and he turns nice, he's like, I see you've constructed a new lightsaber. Indeed, you are powerful as the Emperor has foreseen. It's, and it's like building your own lightsaber is a form of being an awesome Jedi. Well, it's symbolic. Of it your is. Power. It is. Your lightsaber is symbolic of your own power. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's why I'm building me one. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah. Oh, man. So I think that's uh, just about all the time we have for today. Yeah, about time. So let us know what you think <laughs> about our theory. Do you uh, think we're right? Or do you think we are way off? I mean... And we could. We could be so okay, off. But let me just say this. Even if this theory is not true, yeah. please, come on, tell me. you got to believe this is awesome. It has to be awesome. It's totally awesome. And I'm just going to throw this out here. I'll be excited for episode 8 no matter what, but I'm going to be very disappointed if they do not do this. And yeah. I'm almost, I'm almost to the point of saying this has to be true for me to be excited about this. Almost. I don't know. Ugh, I'm just... It could be exciting. They set it up that way. They've totally set it they up. They set it up so perfect, but remember, G.I. Joe... We like to reference G.I. Joe. The first G.I. Joe was actually set up to be really good. The second one was set up to be so good. And then they give us a crap movie. And I hope that doesn't happen for episode 8. I don't think it eight. will. I don't think it will. I don't think, well, I think it will give you hope. Nothing else. I don't think it will be a crap movie. But it could be a great movie if they throw this theory in there. Yes. <laughs> oh my she gosh. has to be the chosen one. She all has right. to be the chosen one. Anyway, that's all the time we have for this week. And uh, until next week, see you later. See ya. That was awesome. It's pretty awesome, so <laughs> you need it.